This is the locally famous Peanuts Bridge. It was built in the early 70s and it's part of Tarzana Elementary School. A member of the school PTA was friends with Charles Schultz and she convinced him to uh, make some art that they could add to the bridge. I remember as a kid, I was so jealous of the kids that got to go to this school. I told my parents, I have to go to that school. I need to cross the Peanuts Bridge every day. One night, just to please me, my parents pulled over and they let me cross the bridge and I was satisfied, never brought it up again. Burbank, between Sepulveda and Havenhurst. I'm headed into the Sepulveda Dam or Sepulveda Basin. I remember in the early and mid 90s, it used to rain a lot in the valley. It would rain really hard for days and this whole area would flood really bad. Like, I mean, parts of it would be completely underwater. As soon as it would start raining hard, they would have to block off this whole street because every year people would drive into this area and get stuck. It happened every year. But here's something about the Sepulveda Dam. I can't tell you how many movies and TV shows you've watched that were filmed right here on this road. Anytime they need an old road or a highway, it's filmed right here. Balboa and Burbank, this is Balboa Park, really big park. And if you came here back in the day on a Sunday, you might have been lucky enough to see the Jacksons playing softball. Back in the day, Tito, Jackie, Marlon, the whole crew would come here and play softball. I don't think Michael ever joined him. And then right across the way is Balboa Lake. This is another park with a man-made lake in it. All right, this is Oxnard in Tarzana. This is a very quiet, mellow area. I mean, right here, this is the Red Barn Feed Store. So that kind of gives you an idea of the area. So that makes what I'm about to show you even stranger. You would never suspect that in the 90s, this was the home of Death Row Records. Originally Can-Am Studios in the 70s and 80s, but then in the 90s, Dr. Dre and Suge Knight took it over and it became Death Row Records. Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Shug Knight, they all hung out here. Right there, number 211. So Can-Am Studios actually took up 211 and 212 right here. Right there, that's where the Can-Am sign used to be. Now, when this was Can-Am Studios in the 80s, I mean, we're talking Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith, Megadeth, Madonna, Bobby Brown, so many others all had their albums worked on here. This was Encino Bowl. A really popular hangout in the 70s and early 80s. The corner of Ventura and Andesol, that Jamba Juice used to be a Winchell's Donut, but that corner right there, that's where Stacy waits for Ron Johnson to pick her up for their date in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Alright, I used to live right up the street, so we used to come to this little shopping center a lot. In the 80s, this Petco was an electronics store. I wish I could remember the name of the store, but I can't for the life of me. I feel like it was something like LA Electronics or something. I used to live right down the street over in that neighborhood. And I remember that one of my neighbors from my apartment building worked at this electronics store and the dude was super 80s looking. He kind of looked like the cool artist dad from My Two Dads. He had the scruffy beard and he would wear trench coats and like tweed sports coats. And he had an awesome red Honda Elite scooter that I used to see him riding to work. And over on this side, that Dollar Tree was CNR. What a difference a day. And right next door to it, Bevmo, that was the warehouse. We used to come here a lot to rent movies. I remember buying a lot of music from here too. I definitely remember buying the Beastie Boys License to Ill from here. I remember begging my dad to buy me the Mellow Man Ace cassette single. And my dad making a really stupid dad joke telling me he didn't want to buy me Mellow Man Ace. <laughs> warehouse was also where I met Roseanne Barr right there by that pillar this was right before she got her show and got really famous and she was really only known for her stand-up comedy this is the building I was just referring to right around the corner from the electronics store this is the third place I ever lived in my life a lot of good times here a lot of skateboarding out front of this building all around this neighborhood actually I spent a lot of time playing in this courtyard especially in this pool I mean, we were in this pool all day, every day, day and night, constantly. Right there on the lower level, number 10, that was my apartment. This here was the rec room. This is where they had the pool table and the ping pong table and the sauna. And we hung out in there all the time. I guess now it's somebody's apartment. 
I don't know why they would get rid of the rec room. Right there on the left side of the stairs, I remember me and my brother had a Nerf basketball hoop that we hung from the second story. And we used to come out here and play basketball all the time. Over on this side of the building, this was the grassy area. It didn't have those plants. We used to come play baseball and stuff. Second story, that was my best friend Eddie Tate's apartment. That first window right there, that was my bedroom window. We used to come out to this area and we would hose it down and do power slides on our skateboards. And me and my brother started a car wash business right here. Right here in this laundry room, I almost got my arm torn off by one of these dryers. What happened was one of the dryers was broken and it didn't shut off when you open the door. My dad had a beanbag chair in there and I stuck my arm in and the beanbag wrapped itself around my arm and was twisting it. Uh, my dad couldn't get my arm out. He didn't know what to do. So he punched the dryer as hard as he could and got it to stop just in the nick of time. Right over here, one of my neighbors caught me and scolded me for playing with matches. Right up there, one of my neighbors tried to take me into his apartment and told me that he was going to cut my ear off because me and my friends played Ding Dong Ditch on his apartment. Oh, they got nice new pool furniture. I remember me and my brother, we used to throw the lawn chairs into the pool. Hmm. I wonder if they added this sign because of us. And right over here, this is where my dad kept his 66 Impala right up until the day that he sold it to a wrecking yard for 75 bucks. Now that car would be worth 10 grand in the condition that it was in. Lindley and Ventura, all these buildings are brand new. This just used to be a big uh, shopping center with a Michaels Arts and Crafts in it. That pharmacy right there on the corner, my whole life, that was a liquor store. If you've ever seen the movie, The Stoned Age, there's a scene where they go into a liquor store and Taylor Negron is running the store. That's the store right there. Right behind this Target, this area over here, in the 80s, this was a somewhat short-lived restaurant called Bonkers. It was actually a really cool restaurant, a 1950s diner. Um, all the 50s and 60s cars would come and hang out in the parking lot. They had dancing where they would move all the tables and chairs aside and a DJ would come in. It was a really cool place. For whatever reason, it didn't last very long and I can't even really find much about it on the internet. This long line of apartment buildings on Ventura Boulevard, when I was a kid, this was Jehovah Witness Assembly Hall. Somewhere right about here was that large Jehovah Witness sign that I remember so well. But long before that, this was the Valley Music Theater. It opened in the early 60s, a theater that originally had plays, and then it became a like a rock music theater Tons of different artists played here in the 60s from Sammy Davis Jr. to The Doors. Things started going downhill and in the 1970s, Jehovah Witness bought out the theater and it became their assembly hall. Now this was the Jehovah Witness church that Michael Jackson and his family attended. I don't know how long or how often Michael Jackson attended this church, but I know that he did come here. This is the far west end of the valley, West Hills. And this right here is West Hills Hospital. The exteriors of this hospital were featured a lot on the TV show Chips. But on September 12th, 1979, something amazing happened at this hospital. I was born. Yes, that's actually me. That's my first baby picture. And no, I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel like I shouldn't be giving away the secret of this hidden gem. But I'm sure some of you already know about this place. And I'm sure some of you don't. So although the ground's kind of breaking apart and the whole thing is covered in leaves and tree stuff, the snake run that goes through this entire park has been a locally favorite skate spot for many years. So this ditch slash snake run goes all the way from the top of the park to the bottom of the park. And if you hike all the way up here to the top, you find this. And this section of the park is just completely covered in junk now. It's obvious that people come up here and do a lot of partying. But as you can see, there's still a lot of spots that are totally skatable that people are still skating. 